Uh, with a little introduction uh, for anyone who hasn't been here before, my name is Kyle Flynn. I'm the Platinum Account Manager here at Voices, as well as the Account Manager who uh, works with all of the coaching partners there that we have on our platform, uh, with Ron being one of them. So, Ron, I'll hand things over. Oh, also, um, this is a recorded session, so anybody um, who is not live today, uh, or if you are live, um, you will receive a... Uh, video link typically about 24 hours afterwards um, with a recording uh, that you can review uh, at uh, your leisure there. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to pass things over to Ron to do, introduce himself and get started. Hey, thanks, Kyle. And um, as we start, I will not greet everyone uh, because everyone's not on the other side of the screen. You are- Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so I believe in one-on-one -on -one attention, one-on-one -on -one, uh, is you and me, and that's how yeah. I coach too. Now, I've been coaching for over 20 years, voice talent, professionals, not amateurs. Uh, mm -hmm. I always take a one-on-one -on -one approach, make it personable, because I believe in giving everyone my personal time and attention, and I can't do that with everyone. What did you tell me, Kyle? There are 400 people maybe signed up for this webinar, so <laughs> yep, that's kind of daunting. So I'm speaking to you on the other side of the screen, and thank you for your time investing here today on a Monday afternoon. Uh, at least this afternoon where I'm at, uh, to hopefully I give you some uh, valuable content and a blessing that you can walk away with and practically use. So thank you to Kyle and thank you to Voices.com for offering us this platform. And through the amazing technology, we are speaking to people and you're listening all over the world. And I am constantly amazed by this technology and how we're able to do this. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Thank you, Kyle. Again, um, by way of introduction, I'm going to use the blurb on Voices.com, the paragraph that maybe many of you saw when this was promoted. And I've got it right here. And this is kind of going to be a, do I share the screen or do you, Kyle? Yeah, you can, you can share the screen there just on the bottom. Okay, great. Uh, this is kind of going to be a lesson within a lesson. As you learn to interpret, copy, and break it down, what does it actually mean? So it's a simple Word document, and I've broken down the paragraph that describe what we were going to talk about today, starting with ready-to-air radio spots. Maybe you don't know what that term means, but defined that phrase, ready-to-air, means your file is ready to be loaded onto the station's on-air software to play over the airwaves in any one particular market so that the in-house radio station producer doesn't have to do anything else with your file because you perfectly processed it, perfectly timed it, and they love that because they have very little work to do. So it's take the file, load it in there, give it a code number or whatever, and it's ready to air whenever the schedule tells it to air. That's what ready to air means. Advertising clients prefer a full service approach. Well, think about that for a second. Don't you prefer full service when you go into a restaurant, uh, your mechanic, your barber or hairdresser? So full service in this business means one, copy or script writing from bullet points they provide. They have an obligation to provide us with some information so we're not just pulling it out of thin air. Voiceover number two, or voice casting in case they need a second or third voice in their ad. And that's what, and with royalty-free music and or sound effects, we'll get more into that later on. Number three, fully produced, distributed to maybe more than one radio station or TV station or media outlet, and archived on your computer. That's all part of full service. And then of course, revisions that happen in this business. They got something wrong, you got something wrong, you have to fix it. All right, breaking it down, continuing. When you can provide music and sound effects into your radio spot, you'll stand out and make more money. I hope that got everybody's attention. But defined, stand out means you're in an audition situation, like on Voices.com. You're in a competition with other talent. So when the client listens to all auditions, 10, 20, 30, 70, 140, and most are dry VO, yours is gonna be fully produced your audition will automatically stand out as soon as they hit the play button. And you'll make more money. How much? Well, if your VO is worth so much of the posted rate, you're automatically gonna be able to charge two or three times as much. What if you provide the copywriting? That's a service. Everything we do in this business starts with somebody writing the copy. 
Now that means wordsmithing and understanding psychology and how to put words together for a cohesive message, but then you make that come alive in audio and that's where your production skills come out. That's what we're gonna talk about today. And I always love the, uh, the terms people use about my skills, make audio sizzle. That would be a sound effect, by the way. Capture the listener's attention. That's very important. Here's a, uh, a factoid for you. This is an old factoid that I was given in broadcasting school. I won't tell you how many years ago, but a long time ago, before the internet, you're hit, your brain is hit with 18,000 advertising messages per day. Can you imagine what it is today? If not quadruple, at least that much or more. And so getting a listener's attention from the very second the message comes on the radio is important. Unique sounds, multi-leveled audio magic. Yeah, I get that all the time. Ron, just do your magic. So we are magicians. We're the people behind the green curtain. And then learn a few secrets. You wanna hear some secrets? Got your attention, don't I? From 30 years of experience in the coaching session that's today. Now, obviously we can't cover, as Kyle mentioned, we're, we're bound by the limitations of time. So we can't cover 30 years of my secrets impossible i'm not superman but i'm going to give you some key points some basics and then some more advanced stuff hopefully within the time we have allotted so by way of introduction uh you already know i've got 30 years experience that includes radio on air television on air radio production television production voice on hold for messages on hold and telephone systems e-learning explainer videos Oh, uh, what haven't I done? Audiobooks. I'm in the middle of several contracts right now doing audiobooks, casting, sweetening, producing, magic. It all falls under the umbrella of running a studio full time and being a project manager in between the clients, the producers, the talent to get clients results. And that's the bottom line, whether it's selling books, selling stuff on TV or radio, the bottom line is helping them sell through their message. Okay. Now we're gonna segue into one of my uh, students, recent graduates who provided us very generously with a two minute testimonial of his experience with me and what he's been doing for the last two or three years. Here's Kyle Goodnight, one of my graduate students. Hi, my name's Kyle Goodnight and I've been in voiceover for about two and a half years. When I first started looking into voiceover, I knew I needed a coach. I didn't have any media background or broadcasting background didn't have any acting background whatsoever. So starting from scratch, um, as I started to compile different coaches, I started to put together a, a list of pros and cons of all the coaches that I interviewed. I ended up interviewing about 12 different coaches. I ended up finding Ron Allen with Big Voice Productions and my interview with him went great. I was invited into his studio. I got to watch him work, his do his daily process of voiceover and production. Um, and it was fantastic. So. Going with Ron, I was able to not only learn acting and voiceover and mic placement and equipment and all the doll stuff that you have to know to, to record voiceovers, but I also learned marketing and business and how to run a day-to-day -day voiceover business. Shortly after I started with Ron, uh, I'd, I'd say about eight months after I started with Ron, which is still short in the first year of things, I ended up landing my very first national gig which was a Yahoo fantasy sports commercial that I actually got off of voices.com. So his preparation uh, and coaching ended up helping me tremendously in that very short period of time of being a new voiceover actor. Since then, I've also landed multiple gigs on voiceovers for e-learning, for uh, uh, corporate narration. Um, I work with companies that have voiceover work done uh, like Nike or IBM, Microsoft, Nature's Own, Yamaha. I also landed an e-learning job with a specific company that does e-learning for a lot of different corporate companies. Um, I actually do work for them on a weekly basis. It has been a great experience and Ron is a, a, a good go-to guy. When I still need advice, he is there and willing to help me in any way possible. So one suggestion i have is find a coach find a coach that you're comfortable with that gives you what you think you need out of the business and of course ron with big boys reduction would be a great choice for that again thank you very much to kyle good night uh, i appreciate his time and effort putting that together and uh, sharing it with you folks and so hopefully you got something of value out of that um, I've heard other coaches on these voices webinars say in the software and the production realm that we do, 
Um, there's no right or wrong. Uh, there's really no one size fits all. And that is true to an extent. The fundamentals are the fundamentals. That would be good audio quality, good gear, good audio levels, things like that. But when it comes to your creativity, that's where you can really bring your own personal touch into audio production. The analogy would be, would every painting be painted the same way by all of us on this call? No. Do we all wear the same shoes and size and color? No. So you can apply your unique individual creativity um, to audio production. And clients love that when they can stand out because they're in competitive industries too. Car dealers, yeah, they love as many whistles and bells as you can put into their ads. It helps them shout louder to their audience. And when they do that, they assume people love to be shouted at. So they're going to come down there and buy a vehicle because they got shouted at louder than the next guy. It's what they believe. Perception is reality. And so I'm going to show you some basics here in audio production. And everybody may have a different DAW, digital audio workstation, but many of us work on Adobe Audition. And I'm using Adobe Audition CC for this demonstration. We start with the basic building blocks of an audio production for a basic 30 second radio commercial. Dry voiceover, which are mostly on talk radio stations, would be very basic. But a step up from that is music or sound effects. But music is the really basic above dry VO. So here you see over here on the left hand side, all the files I have open on this particular session, and that's what they're called a session file. All the parts you'll need, and you think of it as putting together a puzzle. You lay out all the pieces, you turn them over, and you're ready to find where they fit the best. Okay. And then right here in the middle, you'll see a gap where I left room for a sound bite that I planned to put in when I wrote the script. Uh huh. And how about do it for me, Eldon's Automotive? So I'm kind of talking with the audience that is represented by the sound bite. And there's another one. And then the announcer is going to completely take over and take the message to the end. Here's the first sound bite. I think it's a positive. So she said, I think it's a positive. And again, I collect those sound bites like people collect marbles and all kinds of things. And the first person sound bite is gold. I think it's a positive. And then the second sound bite is right here. No, well, it's a negative. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I called the Scott the spot positive or negative, very basic theme. And then here you see is the music that I use as a theme music, a signature piece of music for Eldon's. This came out of my music production library. So it's a hard rock bed, goes about 28 and a half seconds. All right, switching back over to the negatives, um, positive negative session now. Here's where it mixes in Adobe's multi-level mixing platform, multi-track waveform. So from left to right, this track will play, not first, you'll see a little gap there. Track number two is where my voice will come in. Track number three is where I've laid the sound bites. Positive or negative, ladies? Fixing your own car. Well, it's a negative, yeah. Uh-huh. And how about do it for me, Eldon's Automotive? I think it's a positive. I thought so. Then come to Eldon's Automotive for your preventative maintenance. Everything from check engine lights to oil and filter to major or minor repairs, foreign or domestic, Eldon's Automotive does it for you. That's Eldensautomotive.com. Eldens Automotive, leaders in diagnostic technology. All right, so that's called a sting there at the end. This yellow line is the volume of that track. And you may be able to see these little dots. It tells you exactly how much I've raised or lowered the dB along that line. So you can fine tune the volume exactly where you need it. That's why here at the end, I raised it to be a sting, and that's a signature. ID volume uh, I, audio ID for that radio uh, that client, and then my volume is here at maximum, and the volume here is just below that on the sound bites. So very simple three track audio production. You'll notice this black lock padlock looking icon. The clip is locked. That means nothing can move unless I move it. But I can group everything by Control A, and that's a simple Windows command. So everything gets highlighted when I press Control A, puts them in a group. I can right click and grab these and move them up or down, but I cannot move them left or right. Very important that you lock in your session 
Because remember the revisions I mentioned earlier, if a client says, I don't like that sound bite, or we had a change in the copy, you can go back in and change what you need to change without redoing the entire production, which is a time saver. Okay, when you, you have it all right and everything's perfect the way you want it with audio levels and perfectly placed sound bites, the last thing you do is you, know, you look over here and you, are there any asterisks, which is a, a message to you to save your file, save it, and then you can right click on anything, use the right click menu and mix it down the entire session. When you mix it down, it throws you back to the waveform view in mono. However, I'm gonna go to stereo, simple, right there in the middle, click to stereo. Stereo is two channels, top is left, bottom is right. And this is going to an FM radio station, which is always stereo. AM would be mono. I can adjust the volume right here if I want to. The whole file is 30 seconds down here in duration, 30 seconds, just over, acceptable to the radio station. And it sounds okay. Positive or negative, ladies, fixing your own car. Well, it's a negative, yeah. Uh, right. When I said okay, it means it's okay, but I know how to make it sound great. I'm watching the levels down here on the bottom. You want to be at negative four, negative three. That's for FM radio output. But there's no gap right here. You should always put a gap at the beginning of your file. Go to edit and insert silence. I don't want 2.5 seconds, just one second would be fine or half a second. Puts it right there. The same thing at the end. Hit end on your keyboard, go to edit, insert silence, the same thing, one second. That gives you a little buffer in case anything is messed up when you send it through cyberspace or somebody messes up at the radio station and clips your audio. Now, I said, okay, I want to go for greatness. And greatness is on the level of ad agency big time national sound. So I go to one extra sweetening step, I call it the special sauce, under effects, special, mastering. You can apply a mastering effect right here with these presets or make your own. This is where you have to understand a little bit about frequencies, bass, treble, uh, mid-range and treble, left to right. But you can simply use one of their I use Clubmaster a lot. You see an elevation in bass here. I can put a little reverb on there, not too much. And you can sample it before you process it by hitting that button right there to loop. And you can sample it right here. I think it's a positive. I thought so. Then come. You can see how it's too, in the red, that's way too hot, which means the gain is too hot. Just drag this down a couple of dB. I think it's a positive. I thought so. Then come to Eldon's Automotive for your pre just a little bit hot and of course your monitors may sound different than mine then you hit apply you see how it bumps up it puts everything on steroids and chops everything off and then final playthrough positive or negative ladies fixing your own car well it's a negative yeah uh-huh and how about coming in at negative 3 db right there and that's going to sound fantastic at the radio station that's pumping out 50,000 watts 100,000 watts don't go over and stay in the red, just kind of flash the red with your output level. So this would be a start to finish, a ready to air spot, perfectly timed at 30 seconds. Radio station is gonna love it. They take the file, put a number on it and put it in their automation system, done. Now you see the asterisk up here at the title because I haven't labeled my mix down file. So I go to file and save as, browse back to my computer, The where it's going to go, this is going to go into the radio station 2021 under Eldon's Automotive in mix downs. And I got to change it from an MP or wave to an MP3 because that's what the station told me they want. Eldon's Automotive, positive or negative. I've already titled this one. I can just overwrite that and save it. So when you go to email, you know exactly where to go to attach the file. You don't make any mistakes that way. Hit OK, yes, and we're done. You're not done until you clean up your file, so close everything. OK, obviously that was fast. It takes me a little bit longer to actually produce a spot like that. All right, now we're going to go to a more extensive production. I did this one last week. And as we all know, we're in the Halloween season. Halloween season, 
People love scary stuff. Scary haunted houses, haunted trails, it's everywhere. And it starts now in September and goes all the way through October, of course, and sometimes they extend their Halloween season into November. So I did one here for a campground last week and they titled their uh, event Booze and Bites. So you can see here it's blue, which means the session file is right there, verified by that little pop-up window. That's my session file. So you can see this was a little bit more involved. I have uh, six tracks in this production. Sound effects are up here. I have a door, a rusty gate opening up. That's the attention getter. A wind, a ghost town wind will come in here. And then some other sound effects down here to wrap up the spot right at 30 seconds. My VO is down here on track four. I have some other Halloween tracks on, uh, sounds on track three. Some other sound effects down here. You see how they're all color coded too. It makes it easy to separate and understand what's on each track. And even some more Halloween. So you can layer stuff as long as you don't make it all a wash with your levels. And you see the yellow line tells you I'm going up and down in my levels. Okay, just play from over here is all my files that are open in this production. Did that gets your attention. What happened? What's going to happen? Who's behind that gate? A day and night filled with fright. <laughs> At Sarah's Sports Park and Campground, it's booze and bites. <laughs> Saturday, October 9th, live music at noon. Never fear, it'll be here soon. Guaranteed ghoulish fun, as long as you're over 21. Get all the information you need at saraland.org slash Halloween. If you caught that, Sarah that is the actual sound effect from what movie? Psycho, that's right. Is it actual? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I did all that. But uh, see, I, I, I brought that in right where I said slash. So you get that visual scene, a psycho bathtub scene going on. So this is a Halloween spot, takes a little bit more time, multi-track. You can move these spots, these uh, sound bites around any way you want to, adjust the level, and then follow the same procedure. So it's lather, rinse, repeat at this point. It's all done, right click, menu, Mix it down to a new file, entire session. Again, it comes out mono. Switch it easily to stereo. Make it great with a mastering effect. Elevating the bass just a little bit. In this case, I'm gonna put a little bit more reverb on there. Not so much that it washes out. We're not talking in a stadium or anything like that, but I can put up to 15, 18, 20% reverb on this. And it's reverbing the entire file, not just my voice. A day and night filled with fright. <laughs> At Sarah Sports Park and Campground, it's booze and bites. <laughs> Saturday, October 9th, live music at noon. Never fear, it'll be here soon. Guaranteed ghoulish fun, as long as you're over 21. Get all the information you need at saraland.org slash Halloween. Perfectly timed at 30 seconds. And uh, the output level at negative three. I would put a little bit more, take a little bit off from this. Just delete that. Go back to the beginning and put a little buffer space at the very end under edit. Insert one second of silence. Same process now before. File, save the mix down into your computer. So I don't want Eldon's Automotive, I want Sarah Land Park and Campground under mix downs. Change it from a wave to an MP3. Sarah Land Park, Booze and Bites, 30. 192, I'm gonna change the kilobytes here to 320 kilobytes, much higher quality. Okay, everything's good. Okay, overwrite it, yes. Close my file, close everything. Now I go to email and I send it to the client. Any questions? There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we're gonna have some questions. <laughs> so um, before we uh, get directly into the questions there, um, we are going to carry along the theme that we've done in the past um, with regards to uh, 
having uh, Ron work with two talent there, um, which we have selected there. All right, Lenore, are you there? I am. Awesome. Thank Hi, Lenore. You so much for volunteering Hi, Ron. today, Lenore. Absolutely. Thanks right. for having me. Our pleasure. Do you ask me to pull up the copy, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. If you want to pull up the copy there, then we can uh, hop in here. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right. Perfect. Stop down. This came originated right here. So it's my property. And the client you see is Sarah Land Park. That's just an abbreviation, Park and Campground. I'm the writer. It's a 30 second spot. The music will be Halloween. The contact is Shay Lee. She's the uh, radio rep who has the count. The account. Uh, the date it was written, 92221. That's important. So if you get this in your email, you're the last one in line on the team to produce this spot if I cast you. The spot title, Booze and Bites, and the talent is me. In this case, it'll be you. Okay. The next thing you see is SFX stands for sound effects, a rusty gate opens, and then Halloween elements and screams throughout. I didn't get into detail there. You don't have to. And then you see how I've got it, the script numbered. This is a standard radio format, a numbering of script. The purpose of that is if you're talking to a client over the phone and they say, uh, I need a change on line number three, easy. Maybe it's the date, October 9th. As opposed to let's look down at line three, line four, line five. You can quickly find it that way. No, you don't voice those numbers. Yep. Now, did you notice, is it Lenore? Yep. Did you notice that every line is a rhyme? I did. Good. So that's your job. Without me underlining or bolding those words, your job is to pick up on that and make a rhyme, which is part of the attention getting. Mm -hmm. All right. And now you wouldn't do this with your normal Lenore voice, would you? No, it, uh, it looks like it's meant to be a little bit on the spooky side. Okay. You said a little bit on the spooky side. I'll change that right now. A little bit on the spooky side will be for children. As you see, a uh, tip for you is over 21. Okay. So this is for adults. You can let it all go. <laughs> okay. As if you were doing a Stephen King novel. All right. Trust me, that's what they want these days. They're pushing the envelope on scary when it comes to Halloween. Okay. So very scary. Will do. I, I may direct you on an email message or not, especially if you're inexperienced, but I'm teaching you to look at the copy as your part of your direction. Oh, mm -hmm. it's not for kids. This is for adults. Okay. They're going to be serving alcohol. <laughs> of course, you should go to the next step and go to saraland.org and maybe you'll get a clue on what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, have you, you've had the script for a while, right? For the weekend, yes. Great. Did you practice it as far as timing is concerned? Yes. Good. That's important. So this is easily done, six lines and a lot of white space, easily done in less than 30 seconds. Yeah. And you see where the ellipses are in almost every line or three of the lines. That means a big pause right there so I can throw in a sound effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, uh, I'm gonna watch my clock. I'll give you a three, two, one countdown. How many takes do they get, Kyle? Let's... Uh... How much time do we got? Because I want to make sure we do Q and A. Let's do. Let's start with two takes, and we might be able to squeeze a third. All right, great. So I'll uh, critique you what I hear, Lenore. Okay. All right, I'm ready to go. We'll go in uh, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. A day and night filled with fright. At Sarah Sports Park and Campground, it's booze and bites. Saturday, October 9th, live music at noon. Never fear, it'll be here soon. Guaranteed ghoulish fun, as long as you're over 21. Get all the information you need at saraland.org slash Halloween. 29 seconds. Very good. Okay. Uh, a couple of tips here. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of great potential in your voice quality. Okay. I would push you to go even farther, mm -hmm. a little bit faster. Okay. Maybe a little more witchy. Okay. 
if you can go there. How about I, a little playfulness on line four? A little chuckle in there, like a witch would do, right? Okay. Yeah. And also, you may have noticed in my version, and it's bolded, the word slash. Maybe I should have underlined that word, but that's an important word to wrap up the commercial. Okay. All right. So if you were at a level um, seven with that read, I want a level 12. <laughs> okay. Over the top, give me more scary and quicker and to the point. And still using those pauses. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, wait for my clock to come around here. I'm just using an old fashioned uh, sweep second hand. In five, four, three, two, one, go. A day and night filled with fright. At Sarah Sports Park and Campground, it's booze and bites. Saturday, October 9th, live music at noon. Never fear, <laughs> it'll be here soon. Guaranteed ghoulish fun. As long as you're over 21, get all the information you need at sarahland.org slash Halloween. Very nice. A little bit long, but that could be edited <laughs> out with your breaths. So we'll For sure. Over. Yeah, very nice, Lenore. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I was about to say, you you crushed that, Lenore. No, oh, thank you, Kyle. It's hard hey. to hear about the music. I, I, don't, I don't do character-ish type voices very often, so that it's a big stretch for me. Yeah. Well, you're an actress, right? Uh, voice actor, yes. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> There you Good. go. Hey, you brought it to life. <laughs> thank you. Awesome, Lenore. Well, thank you very much. Um, judging by Ron's reaction on that one, I don't think we need a third take. So, looks <laughs> like no. you no. crushed that. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming up. I know it's uh, it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Appreciate uh, the bravery there and and coming forth and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Awesome. Have a great one, Lenore. You too. All right, so we are going to say goodbye to Lenore, and we're bringing on John next. All right, John, I hope you are ready to go. All right. You there, John? Yes, of course. I, I always forget to unmute my microphone. It's a thing. <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> How's it going, John? It's going great. It's good to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So, <clears throat> yeah, Ron, I'll, I'll let you take over. All right, John, how you doing? This is Ron. Hi, Ron. I'm great. How about yourself? Terrific. Thanks for again participating. We, we uh, understand you're in a live audience situation, but hey, that's what we do as pros, right? It's just you and me here. I can only see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, I'm a guy, so of course I'm going to take it a different direction, I think, but Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. So the role, the stereotype that I kind of directed Lenore on was to be a witch. Uh, what would you play? Not a witch, right? Well, I'm, I got Boris Karloff in my head. So okay. that's, that, not uh, wrong. that's not wrong. But except on the paper, I didn't say Boris Karloff. So no, but that, that would be something that, you know, that like, that's what I inserted in my head as an actor as like, that might be the approach that I might take for something like this. Yeah, I like that because it's an adult. Uh, stereotype. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Um, but did Boris Karloff speak fast? Was he confined to 30 seconds? That would be the challenge of doing his or close to his authentic read. Exactly. It's just yeah. more of a flavor than than anything else. It was just a yeah. it's like a starting point for me. Okay, good. All right. We'll try that. <clears throat> okay. You know, you heard what the spot sounds like, right? Yes. All right, good. So you have to imagine that when you're a voice talent, that's all you are. You're not the producer. So you kind right. of have to imagine a rusty gate open and imagine the Halloween elements and screams that may come throughout. Okay. Yes. If you're ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, we'll do the countdown again. Five, four, <clears throat> three, two, one, go. A day and night filled with fright at Sarah's Sports Park and Campground. It's booze and bites. Saturday, October 9th, live music at noon. Never fear, it'll be here soon. Guaranteed ghoulish fun, as long as you're over 21. 
Get all the information you need at saraland.org slash Halloween. Okay, I got your waist short at uh, 24 ish, which tells you what? I can stretch it. I need to leave a little space for the sound. Yes, we call that let it breathe. Right. And yes, leave that, uh, those pauses for my sound effects. Excellent. So when you say stretch, <clears throat> stretch every word or certain words? Certain words. And I think let the silence speak. You, like you said, you have to put the uh, effects in there. So. Yes. And so especially, I would say, the important words are the rhyming words. Right. Yeah. But don't discount the client's name. Always make sure you elevate that client's name. Right. And then, as you said, uh, hit the word slash even harder. Got it. All right. And also, as I uh, directed Lenore, a little a little tongue in cheek, a little chuckle here and there. I mean, get real evil. You got it. You can't get too evil. OK. OK. Right. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> yeah, there, you hear that? That evil laugh? I heard it right there. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. In All right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. A day and night filled with fright. At Sarah's Sports Park and Campground, it's booze and bites. Saturday, October 9th, live music at noon. Never fear, it'll be here soon. Guaranteed ghoulish fun. As long as you're over 21. Get all the information you need at saraland.org slash Halloween. <laughs> Good. I like the la la I would add on that laugh. Uh, I got you about 31-ish, but with uh, the breaths in there, easily get that down to where we need 29, 28 seconds. Yeah, that one was a that one felt a lot more delicious. So there you yeah. go. You said it. You felt more delicious. I love exactly. that. Exactly. You just know when it's right, but you also know when it's wrong, don't you? Oh, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And so don't ever send out something that you know you can do better. Always take it to your optimum performance. Listen Good back advice. as a listener and never say, oh, I got to meet the deadline. I'll get it out and I just threw it together. Uh, uh. Chances are they'll say, nope, we know you can do better. You did in your audition. So do better. Do your absolute best as if it was a Hollywood production. I try to do that every time I audition. Good. Always take it to the extreme, especially in a spot like this. We're yeah. talking alcohol. We're talking 21 adults. We know that. And you're directing, obviously directing the, you can't get all the bullet points in about the event. That's why we tell them to go to a website, right? Right. All in an entertaining 30 second platform. It's challenging, but it's fun. It is fun. Yeah, when you hear it back with the music and sound effects, then it's going to come to full life. I think you did Excellent. a great job on that that second one, like Ron said, bringing it to full life there. You really, really dove in on it. Thanks, Kyle. Awesome, John. Well, again, thank you so much for uh, doing this. Uh, as I said to Lenore, I know it's probably quite on your guys' end, so I uh, really appreciate it. That brings us to the Q&A there. Um, as, uh, by the way, I'm seeing in the chats here, also did want to shout out, I, I hope John and Lenore are seeing the chat. Uh, you guys did amazing and, and the community is there to, to back that up. So, all right. So jumping into the Q&A, um, I did see some uh, questions there that uh, I want to get over to Ron's ears there. Um, if you've got any other questions, feel free to throw them in there now. I will try to get to as many as I can. All right. All right. We'll start off with the first uh, question here from Erica. Um, Ron, where do you um, get sound effects? Um, are they royalty free? What does that look like for you when you're fully producing? I thought that question would come up. I'm glad it came up first. Um, I get that question all the time from my students, of course. And it's like any other business, you have to have the tools of the trade to be able to offer these services, number mm -hmm. one. And uh, yes, there are internet sites where you can grab stuff for free, uh, but the old adage applies, you get what you pay for. So make sure you check the quality before you 
download that and be very careful. Some of those sites will redirect and there's a lot of viruses out there. So be very, very careful. I caution you not to go to those sites um, because it's just too much danger and you'll end up with a sick computer before you know it. It's better to go to a reputable source and there are many, and there have been for many, many years, radio production, you can Google this, radio production music, radio production sound effects, audio production sound effects, audio production music, it all should lead you to the same reputable websites. Okay, in my career over 30 years time, as I said, I've been collecting stuff. I will collect stuff like crazy. My computer is filled with thousands and thousands of files, both music and sound effects, and they're all categorized in the effort of making uh, production quick and get it to the deadline for the client to have it on time when it's got to go on the air. So you have to be organized in your uh, files in your computer. So you know, where does my music go? Not just a music folder, music and then subfolders, rock, classic, country, all the standards, and then the substandards, smooth jazz, Dixieland jazz, big band jazz, all that stuff. It helps, trust me. Same with sound effects, a general sound effects folder, and then I've got one for Halloween. And guess when I use it? This time of year through the end of October. And I pretty much put it away. And then I opened the Christmas sound effects folder coming up in November. So where do you get them? I use two primarily now. As I said, I've got a lot. But occasionally, I don't have a sound effect that I need and I can't make for myself. That's the free part. Can everybody do this? Rip a piece of paper. That's a ripping sound effect. And you can manipulate that in your software so many ways. Uh, a knock on the door. Hey, I just made one. Pretty easy. Okay. Uh, but I use uh, soundsnap.com, soundsnap. When they first came around, oh, seven or eight years ago, they were freeware, shareware from all over the world. But now they've uh, got a membership going, like any other site. Uh, they've categorized it in three or four different packages, like a minimum, maybe five sound effects, and they charge you accordingly and make a buck and a half or so. I mean, $1.50 for a sound effect, but then you own it. You own it forever. So that's a pretty good deal. And they keep track of how many downloads you do in whatever package that you purchase. Sound Dogs is another one, sounddogs.com. They've been around a long time. Uh, I've never subscribed there, but I know about it. And then for music, audioblocks.com. I use that a lot, which is paired with video blocks. And they've uh, really grown and added sound effects too. But for good quality music that is not dated in any uh, decade, Audioblocks.com, I found is a very good uh, music sound, of, a music uh, library. And it's called production music for a reason. It's not going to be contemporary popular music you hear on the radio. It's primarily instrumental, no vocals, maybe some ghost vocals here and there, but no, you don't want any vocals in a production like this. Good question, Eric. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Um, and uh, I do have a question here from Jim, that uh, I think you'll be able to uh, uh, elaborate on a little bit. Um, he's wondering what plugins do you recommend when uh, looking at DSing and mouth noises? What would be your recommendation just from a DSing standpoint and mouth noise standpoint? Okay, um, you got a couple of options with DSing. And first of all, you have to understand you're getting into the frequency of a sound. So be careful. You can really mess things up in a heartbeat. You've got pre and you've got post. If you have a pre-amplifier in your chain, which I highly recommend, you can set the de and it will take out much of that sibilance before you even get to production. Easy, saves time. On post, you can go to the de under the effects uh, button. And in Adobe, you have a de light, de medium, de hard. And it's gonna be each to every person on how much you need in de -sing. Remember, you never wanna take out the S sound completely that will not sound natural. On the other side, you don't want to sound like a snake unless you're playing a snake, okay? <laughs> so have your ear tuned how much DSing, that's why they have in there on the, what they call the uh, presets, light, medium, and hard. You have to sample it before you process it. So listen again and again and again. And of course you better have good headphones and good monitors to listen. I'm talking studio monitors, not computer monitors. Good question. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, this is, uh, looks like a, yeah, audio thing as well um, from Irene. Irene um, bought a new MacBook Pro 
Um, for some reason, the motor is very loud on her computer. And when she's first opening it, it's ruining her recordings. Do you have any recommendations on what she might be able to use in order to huff that sound out? Kind of like a background noise, it sounds like. Okay. Uh, we're going back to preamps for answer to that question. In my studio, I have a PC, not a Mac, but it's hot in my studio sometimes when I close the door like I have now. I run a fan here in the summertime, a fan, yes, a fan that of course makes noise, but I don't worry about it because my preamp has an attenuator on it, which is basically a filter for the room noise. And I'm telling you, it's a godsend. I can filter out that noise from right here, five, six feet away. My fan is right over here in the corner. That's unheard of in a studio like this, but with my attenuator, I dial it right down and I can watch it on my level meter, on my input level meter, where I'm dialing it down, basically filter it out. Of course, uh, every computer you have has a fan in it of some kind. Mine has six fans in it, it's that big, but, and those are two feet away from my microphone. But my attenuator, again, takes it out. Shield it as much as you can. If you can't afford a good preamp, at least put a shield between, and it would be a piece of cardboard, as simple as a piece of cardboard, between your Mac tower, unless you're on a laptop, but as far away from your microphone as you can get it and some kind of a shield. Not enough to block ventilation because you'll get too hot in your machine, but a simple uh, barrier of some kind will block that sound. It'll go a long way. Awesome, awesome. And um, I have a Jim again. I have a question from Jim. Um, Speaking of preamps, what do you use and what would be uh, one that you recommend for somebody that's on a budget? I have two preamps. Uh, one is a Focusrite ISA 220, which is really old, but really good. It's not my main preamp. My main preamp is called an Aphex, A-P-H-E-X. Uh, they used to make a 230 model. They don't make the 230 anymore. They stopped that 10 years ago or so. They now it's called an Aphex channel mic preamp. Now it's a little bit pricey and it's relevant to everybody's budget. Uh, it runs a thousand dollars brand new, but I made that investment and I'm happy I did. That's a piece of equipment that I will get my return out of to compete on the national international scale. There are many, many preamps on the market. Aphex I like because they have proprietary software or built-in technology called the Big Bottom and Oral Exciter. And there's a YouTube video on this that explains everything about it, of course. Um, but I use an Aphex channel preamp and I've used it for 10 years or so, and I love it. And I'm pairing it now with my Christmas present to myself, a Neumann U87, but I've been using my stock microphone, which is a uh, shotgun 416, Sennheiser shotgun 416. Either microphone is paired with this preamp perfectly. So I highly recommend a preamp when you can afford it. There are lesser quality ones and lesser budget ones on the market as well. Of course, I don't have experience with all of them. So do your research, find what fits your budget, pay attention to the reviews from people that are experienced, but definitely get a preamp when you can afford it. It'll save you time in post. It just makes sense. I see some chats coming in. I believe uh, Ganthet or can't remember his name, but he's right about the uh, story blocks. They merged audio blocks and video blocks are now storyblocks.com. And also he's right about plugins that he commented on. There's a fantastic plugin on the market called Isotope, Isotope, and it's called uh, Audio Editor. They're up to RX9 now. They just came out with RX9. I have RX7, huge time saver. It's a standalone plugin that works seamlessly with Adobe. Cleans up your audio, plosives, mouth clicks, you know, it'll de-reverb a file. Amazing software and fairly affordable. Uh, if you consider your time is worth money, highly recommend an Isotope plugin. Outstanding. And uh, on the preamps, I, I wanted to, I've heard really great things uh, in regards to being on a budget and it kind of uh, uh, being a good go-to. It's the Scarlet Focus Rate. Um, yeah. On a budget, I've heard good things. Uh, there's actually a Scarlett Focusrite interface. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking interface. 
Yeah, that's my my bad. Not to be confused, uh, Focusrite builds in small preamps into the interface. It's built yes. in, into the software in the motherboard, but you don't have as much control like you do on a standalone preamp. I've got 12, 15 different buttons and dials here. I can really customize my sound to my voice and my microphones. So that's different, but I'm glad you brought that up. Interface. I was about to say, and that's why we have Ron the Pro here. <laughs> there you go um and i did see somebody I, I mentioned it earlier on i did see somebody ask if this is being recorded uh it is being recorded and it will be sent out to you guys um that you can watch at your leisure um and sorry i'm playing catch up in the chat here i'm going back and forth between the cat chat and the the q a spot two separate spots so um I have, let's see, a question from uh, Liza. Is it possible to get audio and music without having to subscribe to, um, to what is it, Storyblock, Storybox? Storyblocks.com or SoundSnap. Yep. Oh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, maybe she didn't catch this, but there are free sites out there. If you just put the word free in, but you get what you pay for. That old adage is so true. And you're running a risk of um, downloading a virus on a less than reputable site. So highly recommend you're cautious with that. Um, free stuff is out there as people grow their businesses and they're providing these sound effects and music that we need. They know that. But again, there are ne'er-do-wells out there that'll take advantage and trick you into going to a site you don't want to go to and infect your computer. So just be very, very careful. That's why you always go, yes, you have to pay for it. Hey, it's a tax write-off, count that. And you're getting quality stuff, not from uh, the 70s or 80s, you know, with synthesizer-based. You don't want that. You want something that sounds contemporary for the, the century that we're in now. Definitely, definitely. And uh, so we're reaching the end here. Uh, I did have one question uh, that I saw come in that I want to make sure is asked. Um, and it's, uh, for somebody looking to reach out to you, Ron, I know we said it before. Um, what's the best way for someone to get in touch with you today? Okay. Um, I'm always watching my email. I mean, I'm glued to it. So email is <laughs> the best. And that is bigvoiceproductions with an S at Gmail. Or through my website, which is bigvoiceproductions.com and use the contact form. That'll go right to my email as well. And you can find my phone number there on my website as well. And uh, if I'm busy, I will put you in voicemail, but I'll get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. Awesome. Awesome. So anybody's questions that we didn't um, get to, feel free to reach out to Ron there. I'm sure he'd be happy to chat with you. Um, and that is bringing us to the top of the hour. So I just want to extend a very big thank you to Ron for joining us today. Ron, thank you so much for spending the hour with us and uh, sharing your knowledge. Well, hey, thanks to Voices.com. Uh, without you guys, it'd be very difficult to reach out to everybody. Uh, individually. <laughs> so you guys provide this platform for me and the other coaches to share our knowledge and share our wealth of information. Freely I receive, freely we give, uh, so everybody can help grow and be prosperous and keep working from home. Exactly, exactly. And thank you, everybody who attended us today. Uh, I know you guys set out an hour of your time uh, to watch this, so really appreciate that. Um, so thank you all for coming. And uh, until next month, uh, when I will see you then, I hope you guys uh, have a great time and happy auditioning. How about you? You as well, Ron. I'm sure we'll chat soon. All right. Take care. All right. Take care.